not gay, but I'm not gonna do it. So. These robbers yeah, are stuck inside the store. Nice yeah, stuck. Trying to buy some stone and get motherfuckers in here robbing the store. Hell no, boy. We need to these people get prosecuted and get prosecuted the right way. The court system in this. I mean, seriously. Are y'all getting caught for real? They still grabbing stuff like they're getting out. <laughs> Man. Oh, here they come, here they come, here they come. Here they come. <laughs> <laughs> What happened to the response time of the cop, I know, man. seriously. This, this lady had called him. Oh, what's she at? Yeah. The response time is so... This is taking forever. So, so we got these guys are holding the door. They got man. the robbers locked in the store. We just walked out. The robbers are stuck in the store. Boy, they just ruined their summer. He had just walked out of here. And they came in with masks. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, 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 oh. All right, guys, so we got to talk about a story that would be a feel-good story if it wasn't for the George Floridification of America that has resulted in a national police shortage, okay? It's to the point now where there really is no point of having police in certain situations due to the fact that it takes police forever to arrive, and once they arrive, uh, a lot of times they really don't do anything. They might write a report. They might not write a report. Uh, and then, you know, the criminal probably won't get caught. They do get caught. They'll get a slap on the wrist and get, you know, released back into the streets immediately because of the soft on crime DAs and politicians running these cities. It's an unfortunate reality that has emboldened criminals across the country to commit crimes in broad daylight because they believe there will be no consequences for their actions. However, that has motivated law abiding citizens to step up and to try to apprehend the criminals or to stop the crime themselves because again you can't just rely on police nowadays okay and people getting fed up with the criminal activity that has caused chaos and destruction in these cities and that takes me to the story out in nashville tennessee where you had a bunch of based law-abiding citizens who decided to trap robbers in a store i think it was a perfume store out at um, a shopping outlet as they were trying to rob the store okay and the um, robbers were trapped in the store uh, they couldn't get out and they were forced to try to get out the back door uh, before police arrived and I want to cover this story because again this should be a feel-good story okay if we were in a society that was operating correctly but because we're not unfortunately unfortunately uh, it seems like the robbers got away despite the efforts from the law-abiding citizens. So I want to talk about it, but before we get into it, we have to have a word from the sponsor of this video, Noble Gold. Gold is on an unstoppable run. It has went up 81% over the past five years and almost 20% over the past 12 months. It is happening. Central banks are ditching the dollar and U.S. treasuries, and they are buying more Goal. The good news is that it is predicted to go up even more. UBS predicted that gold could go up to $5,000 and at Noble Gold Investments, their phones are ringing off the hook. And that is because everybody wants to protect their retirement with gold and you can do it as well. Noble Gold Investments can help you secure some gold to protect your future. From day one, you work with the same dedicated all American expert. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced investor, Noble Gold Investments will help you get all the help that you need. And this month, Noble Gold Investments is offering a free one four ounce gold standard coin when you open up a qualified account. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com. That is noblegoldinvestments.com. And don't forget, there's a risk with every investment and there's no guarantee of any kind. Effort caught on camera at the Tanger outlets in South Nashville yesterday. Bystanders say they tried to block in a group of alleged robbers there at the mall, but the suspects would get away before police arrived on scene. Our Steve Mailing joins us live in studio. So Steve, how did all of this happen? Well, Tracy, not only was the effort to actually keep them inside caught on camera, but we were also able to track down video of their daring escape. Now, I spoke with one man today who was inside the store when this all first broke out. 
It was anything but a typical Saturday at South Nashville for Tanger Outlet shoppers, especially for Preston, who asked we only use his first name. And then I saw a cologne store and I was thinking, you know, I need some new cologne. Preston is talking about perfume mania, which little did he know would be the target of what appeared to be a quick burglary. All of a sudden I hear them start yelling. They say, y'all can't be in here, get out of here. So I turn around and see three, four people walk in, mask, hoodies on. Preston says alongside the workers, he ran out of the store, but he didn't go far. He garnered the attention of bystanders who worked collectively as a group to take action. I've never seen it happen before, so I was a little in shock. I just doing what I thought I should do. These robbers are stuck inside the store. And that's where we pick up the story here, through the eyes of Preston's mother's phone. As about a half a dozen bystanders held the door shut, she got it all on video. Now, as you can see here, it looks like there's bystander. a security guy right there. Now, again, what is the purpose of the security guy? What's the purpose? See, this is what I'm talking about in terms of our society being ass backwards, okay? Like, I understand that there has to be a process to become a law enforcement officer, but I don't understand hiring security if all they do is just stand there, right? I don't get the point, okay? They should actually, I don't know, do something about this. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, okay? Maybe somebody should educate me on this, but I'm just saying, I don't see the point. And it, this is something I've seen with so many different stories, even the ones in California where you have the mass retail theft. The security guys are standing right there. The companies will hire security folks, and the security folks can't do anything, can't do nothing about it, can't touch them. Again, it's crazy. It really is. Video. In the video, albeit a bit grainy, you can see four people in hoodies and masks inside the store. Running around the store trying to break through the cash register, uh, break through all the glass, get all the cologne out of the drawers and stuff. Even with the fortified group effort. Oh, they're trying to break the door down. They eventually broke out the back door. Witnesses say the suspects were gone by the time police got on scene. Which is a damn shame. And again, what do you think is the reason that these uh, young scholars are robbing this store, right? AOC would say because they hungry, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's because they don't have any running water and they smell bad. So they need to get some perfume, right? In order to smell better. Maybe that's it. I don't know, okay? I'm just saying that the progressives will try to justify this type of stuff and say, well, there's something they don't have that they need and this is why they're doing it. They're doing it out of necessity. Well, no, what they're really trying to do is that they're trying to steal the perfume and, and then sell it online, okay, in order to make money instead of getting a real job. Preston says all of the people who helped say they're tired of dealing with instances like this at the outlets. And they've said this happened a lot in that area, and like specifically that mall. The other people just seemed really upset about it because they're living in the area. It's upset that it happened so often. I mean, they're tearing this place up. Well, now the video may stop before the alleged suspects actually get away, but our story doesn't end there. Now, Preston had mentioned security told them the people who got away actually found their way onto I-24. Now, we checked out the footage around 3 p.m. yesterday afternoon. As you can see here, you can see a person running along the side of the interstate. And then not too far behind, two others will join them. Wow. All of the people wearing hoodies here match the ones in the store's video. Now, they'd eventually jump out into a lane of traffic, stop a car, hop in, and take off, Tracy. Holy cow. But hold on here. Police were there, you said, at the time of this crime. So how could these guys evade police like this? Yeah, well, Tracy, people I spoke with say it actually took Metro PD about 30 minutes to get on scene. That whole time, those people outside standing in front of that door or trying to keep them inside before they broke out the back. Now, we reached out to Tanger and Metro PD. Metro Police told me the report for this incident is yet to be filed, but they were originally called out for a fight outside of the Victoria's Secret right next door. And they say they were told about shoplifters at Perfume Mania. Tracy. That is not something you see every day, especially that video on the freeway. Thank you so much. Yeah, so pathetic. Okay, what you just saw there was a response time that is unacceptable. But again, it's not necessarily the police's fault because they are severely understaffed in Nashville. In fact, if you guys remember, uh, the Metro Nashville Police Department is the same story that I did probably maybe a few months ago where they were so desperate that they are like trying to recruit female police officers. OK, and they're low key lowering the standards for the female police officers in order to, uh, to have more people join the squad. Right. But again, this is a part of the George fortification of America. Uh, listen to this report where the response times are just completely unacceptable because 
They don't have enough people, right? They just don't have enough police officers. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marius Payton. And I'm Lauren Lowry. The city's police union says their officers are struggling to improve response times to crimes. It comes after a WSMB4 investigation first uncovered that response times for urgent crimes have nearly doubled in the last five years. Chief investigative reporter Jeremy Finley brought crime victims concerns to the mayor. Tonight, the Fraternal Order of Police calls what WSMV4 investigates exposed as disheartening. How that an urgent calls to crimes like rape, burglary, and domestic violence, where the crimes have already occurred, response times have close to doubled over the past five years. Just five years ago, 30 minutes on average to respond to burglary. But by 2023, it had jumped to nearly an hour. It took Metro Police more than two hours to respond to the theft of Cody Herman's Jeep. When you made the call, how quickly did you expect police to get here? 15 to 20 minutes. Now the FOP is weighing in, writing to WSMV4 investigates. They are disheartened to learn that response times have become a point of concern for many in our community. And without significant increases in staffing to counter this growth, Metro Police will undoubtedly continue to struggle to meet the reasonable expectations of Nashville citizenry. Yeah, I mean, at this point, there is no reason to have police. I mean, let's keep it 100. If they take an hour, an hour to get there, right? Just imagine, imagine, imagine somebody breaking into your house and you call the police and they're not going to be there for an hour. What is the point? Again, this is why you should be armed, okay? This is why you should be armed, okay? And this is why you should be especially fearful of Democrats in these Democrat-run states and cities that want to take away your right to defend yourself while also at the same time defunding police, demonizing police, making it a lot more uh, difficult for uh, people to want to be police officers. Um, yeah, what happens when you're in a situation like that? Well... You got to fend for yourself because the police aren't going to protect you, but the criminals are still going to have the guns. They're still going to try to rob you. They're still going to try to harm you. And this is, again, why you have to be armed. You have to protect yourself. You have to police yourself. Police are just not reliable in 2024. And again, this is Nashville. Nashville, which I believe is a liberal city, but at the same time is in a red state. But again, their police, their police are struggling, struggling. Average response time of 60 minutes. So in that last video that we saw, the police actually got there fast, right? 30 minutes was fast for them, okay? Even though you would think that that's slow, super slow. And again, a, a normal sane world, right? Where you, you expect, okay, police would be on the scene maybe 10, 15 minutes, right? No. 30 minutes. And that's quick. That's quick compared to the average, which is an hour, one whole hour. Again, there's no point calling police. No point. This is a complex problem. WSMV4 investigates took our findings to Nashville Mayor Freddie O'Connell, including that the city is down 170 officers. But O'Connell says the violent crime rate is dropping, citing a strategy to overlap 10 hour shifts. So more officers are working during peak crime hours and trying to graduate more officers from the academy. While it's frustrating if you're ever the victim of a crime not to have somebody be there, um, in, a, in the whole of what's happening in the city, uh, the overall strategy of Chief Drake, the overall investments we've made in police and, and community safety have resulted in a drop in crime. Still, the FOP isn't satisfied, telling WSNB4 investigates we stand ready to sit down with Mayor O'Connell and his administration to discuss the various ways that can bring real solutions to the looming staffing crisis. Jeremy Finley, WSNB4 investigates. For context, here's the crime stats from 2023. Violent crime overall was down by nearly 2%, including robberies and murder. But property crimes overall, like burglaries and car theft, rose by more than 15%. Now, again, when you put that in real context in regards to what were those statistics uh, before the George Floridification of America, uh, you'll probably see that crime is still up since then, right? Again, this is the tomfoolery that these people try to pull on average people. What they say, well, crime dropped a little bit in 2023. Therefore, crime is declining, right? And defunding the police works. We don't need as many police officers. When it's like, again, when you look at crime, okay, and the trends of crime since 2019, before the George Floridification of this country, crime is going up. It remains elevated, okay? Like, for example... Look at these statistics from the Council on uh, Criminal Justice. 
since 2019, homicide was 18% higher, okay, in 2023 than compared to 2019. When you look at gun assault, 32% higher. Uh, motor vehicle thefts, 105% higher. Carjacking, 93% higher. Aggravated assault, 8% higher. You have robbery, 1% higher, which some of these I don't believe, like the larceny and the robbery. Again, these happen to be the ones that, you know, they don't really report that much, okay? And shoplifting, okay? Like, for example, this one right here, uh, they say it's negative 2% lower than 2019. I don't believe that. Why do I say that? Well, again, it's because these are the crimes that happen to not get reported as much, right? And the police are less likely to do anything about them. Uh, the criminals, if they get caught, they're less likely to actually face any real charges or anything like that. So I don't really believe those, right? Those are the less reliable ones. But again, when you look at homicides, assaults, you know, car thefts, things like that, like, again, the worst ones, right? Up significantly from 2019. But yeah, these all oh, crime is going down, right? This is the, this is the nonsense they want to push on people. It's a GOP conspiracy that crime is a problem. No, crime is a huge problem. And the fact that we don't have enough police on the street to deal with crime is part of the reason why. It takes an hour on average in Nashville for a police officer to respond. Again, there's no point in calling police. The criminal is gone. They done committed the crime. They're out. They're on the way. Just like in that, that story that I showed you guys. These guys were on the highway walking on foot. They didn't even have a getaway car. And they still got away. They still got away. So, you know, again, this is the kind of world we live in. And as long as we continue to demonize police, as long as we continue to demonize law enforcement, uh, we don't pay law enforcement enough. We don't appreciate law enforcement. This is what happens. This is the type of world we got to deal with. Now everybody has to, you know, police themselves, right? Which, you know, hey, libertarians may like that, right? They may like that. But I don't think personally that in real life that, that works. But, you know, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.